Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I am so glad you could join me today for another reading. Uh, as always, a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. If you would like to join them or other uh, more short-term ways of supporting the channel, there are links to do so in the description. That's what that was. Uh, and I don't have any further announcements. Uh, this is the first episode in July which means my new upload schedule is happening, which means there will be uh, a cover, not a D&D &D parody, uh, you know, on Monday. That's what it is. We had the first parody a few days ago, uh, and so now we're rolling into just the regular covers, uh, which I should probably record soon. But anyway, I think with that, I've got the book, I've got my drink, the mug is in the dishwasher, so the not-sponsored Yeti will have to do. Yeti, if you would like to sponsor me, please reach out. But with that, we're going to dive back into The Legend of Luke by Brian Jakes. Chapter 24 The night was humid, still warm from the day's sun. The Sena came back to the island on the flood tide, showing no sail. Luke and Verg dropped anchor offshore. Verg was muttering to himself as they went over the side. Can't tell if any beast's watching us. I hope no one spotted us coming in. Suppose they did, though. Maybe one of us should have stayed back as guards on the boat. Luke chuckled dryly. I thought of that myself, mate. But it'll take the two of us to rescue our crew. Besides, if we get caught too, then what use is a ship to us? Stow your chunner in, Verg. You get to sound more like an old mousewife every day. They stole over the deserted beach, using any rocks they found as cover. Closer to the foothills, Verg held up a paw. Shh! Listen! You hear anything? Luke stood still and listened closely. Thought it was the waves at first, but it sounds like some sort of chant. Drums, too! Aye, that's the sound of drums! Verg pointed to the foothills, slightly to the right of them. Coming from here, matey! I'm sure it is! Sword and spear at the ready, they pressed on into the foliage stretching uphill before them. The sounds of drums and chanting grew louder, closer. Luke whispered, Stay there, mate. I'll go have a peek. The cave entrance was a short, winding tunnel. Luke sized up the live of the land, then beckoned to Verg. They crouched behind a bush at one end of the entrance, whilst Luke explained his plan. See that own boulder? Just up the hill there. Do you reckon we could shift it between us, Verg? Aye. We can at least give it a try, mate. Good. But first we need to dig a bit of a hole here. Where? Right here in the entrance to the tunnel? That's right. Ground's pretty soft. We'll use our weapons. Between them, they scraped out a hollow depression in the tunnel's mouth. Luke searched about until he found a sizable chunk of rock, which he placed to one side of the hole, tamping it down firmly. Right. Now, let's move that boulder. It was a large, round stone, but it moved slowly when Luke set his back against it and Verg used his spear butt as a lever. Luke fought for control as they rolled it down towards the entrance. Whoa, go easy there, mate. Easy does it. Just a touch more. There. I should do it. The boulder was checked from rolling into the hole at the cave entrance by the rock Luke had placed there, which now served as a wedge to hold the boulder back. Luke drew his sword, then paused. Those drums stopped. Come on, something must be going on in there. Be careful not to make any noise, matey. The friends crept through the tunnel, and keeping to the shadowed walls, entered the main cave, hardly able to believe their eyes at what they saw. Sinister green firelight flickered over the massed faces of the rodents packed on the ledges, all staring, fascinated, at one thing. The Great Snake. The reptile's thick neck was quivering as, rearing back and hissing coldly, it prepared to strike at Bo. Luke sprang into immediate action. Grabbing Verg's spear, he hop-skipped forward a pace and hurled the hefty weapon with all the force he could muster. Speechless with horror, Bo saw the reptile's mouth open wide, revealing sharp, deadly fangs as it struck forward at his unprotected face. Then, like a lightning bolt, the spear went smashing into the gaping mouth, driving half its length out through the back of the neck column. Thrashing wildly in its death throes, the snake fell back to the floor, its powerful body flailing like an immense bullwhip, battering rodents from the lower ledges and scattering the fire into a cascade of flying sparks and embers. 
The weasel scarce had time to turn before Luke was upon her, ramming the vermin leader flat against the rock wall, his sword blade at her, at her throat. One move and you're a dead rat, scum! He roared into her painted face. Though the weasel could not understand Luke's language, the message was clear. The only part of her which moved was her throat as she gulped against the sword blade. "'Tis Luke, mates! We're saved!" A ragged cheer rang out from the crew. Below them, the dead snake was still causing great damage. Rodents were flung high, smashed against the cave walls, crushed and beaten senseless by the writhing coils of the monster. It seemed like an eternity before the reptile's body went limp and still. However, a great number of the rodents had escaped serious injury, huddling together on the highest cave ledges. Several of them now grabbed weapons and advanced on Luke and Verg, screeching savagely, Luke sw Verg swiftly sp freed his spear from the snake's carcass and joined Luke, pressing his spear point against the weasel's heart. Luke kept the sword at her throat as he growled, Tell them to back off and cut my crew loose! He nodded to the bound figures hanging from the poles on the cave ceiling. My crew, cut them down before I cut you down. Now! The weasel raised a paw slowly and pointed at the crew. Rabatuma, lago, cut! One rodent, obviously some kind of minor chieftain, bowed curtly to the weasel. Yamarahaga! Turning suddenly to the rest, he indicated the prisoners. Lago! Rabatuma! Bo had recovered from his shock and rediscovered speech. I should jolly well save you, you little fiends! You heard him! Let us Rabatumas go this very instant! The rodents obeyed. Swinging out on ropes, they perched on the poles and sawed through the crew's bonds with their daggers. With shouts of relief and pain, Bo and the sanest crew mice fell to the dusty cave floor where they lay groaning. Cordo whimpered as he tried to ride. rise. Paws has gone numb with being tied for so long. Luke's reply was brusque. We can't linger here, mate. Crawl out on your bellies. Move yourselves, that's an order. Luke and Verg were still menacing the weasel as the crew hauled themselves out in a sorry, complaining bunch. I'll hook up pins and needles in all my paws. My poor head's aching fit to split, mate. Look, that rodent slashed my tail when he cut the ropes. You should complain. My back fur's all scorched from hanging over that blazing fire. Luke kicked the last one's tail lightly. Maybe next time you'll wait on my orders before dashing ashore to stuff drugged fruit down your faces. When the crew were gone, Luke spun the weasel around and kept the blade held across her throat from behind. Keep an eye on those savages, Verg. Stick them if they get too close. Right, weasel. We're backing out of here nice and easy. Don't move, or you're a dead un. As they retreated, the rodents followed them, crying, Lago Barahaga! Luke was beginning to understand what they said. Don't fret, buckos. We'll let go of your Marahaga as soon as we're out to this stinking place. Now back off! They, ne they negotiated the short winding tunnel. Waiting outside, the crew were massaging life back into their numbed paws. Luke guided the weasel around the shallow pit they had dug, and the rodents had just reached its edge when he nodded to Verg. Knock that, knock that wedge aside! Sharpish! Verg hit the piece of rock, a sharp tap with his spear butt, moving it aside. The boulder rolled forward half a turn and landed in the shallow hole with a bump. It blocked the tunnel entrance off completely and muffled the squeaks of rage sounding from behind it. Verg leaned on his spear, grinning. A good tight fit, I'd say, mate. Luke ordered his crew back aboard the Sena, whilst he and Verg took the weasel and forced her to sit next to the pile of squashed fruit. With his sword point, Luke drew a picture of the gore leech in the sand, and then he transferred the point back to the weasel's throat. Marahaga see red ship sail by here? Red ship? Big one? The weasel watched Luke's face as he repeated the question several times over. Carefully, she drew three circles in the sand, with squiggly lines radiating out from them, and an arrow pointing south. Whilst Verg squinted at the drawing, the weasel tapped Luke's sketch of the ship thrice. Luke understood. Ah, three suns, that's three days, he explained to his bemused friend. She says the red ship sailed by here three days back, bound south. Verg dusted his paws off in a businesslike manner. That means we ain't too far behind him, mate. Better get underway. What do we do about this one, Luke? The weasel looked unhappily at the warrior. Touching the sword blade with a paw, she tried to shake her head. A mischievous smile crept over Luke's face. 
and he thrust a big squashed plum at the weasel's mouth. Eight. She shut her lips in revulsion. Luke swung his blade as aloft as if to slay her with one blow. Marahaga! Eat! Eat! The weasel gobbled the fruit with a fierce alacrity. Ver giggled like a mouse babe and selected a bruised pear. Come on, Mary Haggett, try some of your own medicine. The weasel was forced to down two more plums and a peach. She sat unhappily, juice dribbling down her chin. Verg turned to Luke, full of mock sympathy. Dear Amy, she don't look too happy, mate. Do you think she's still hungry? Luke passed the weasel a half-eaten apple and one of his, that one of his crew had sampled on earlier. Oh, I wouldn't worry about old Marahaga, mate. She'll cheer up soon. Come on, let's get going. When they looked back, the weasel had picked up a piece of fruit and was about to hurl it at them. She swayed, dropped the fruit, and sat down with a bump, a silly grin plastered on her painted face. Verg waved to her. Goodbye, old Mariagate. It is nice to see we're leaving you happy. I can't abide sad farewells. Luke waved too. Aye, and take care of that headache you love tomorrow. As the Sena left the island in her wake, the crew sat sipping hot tea of a herbal remedy brewed by Denno. Cordo, voted spokesmouse by his crewmates, addressed the warrior. Luke, we're sorry we raced ashore and ate that fruit. It was silly of us. But we'd like to offer a hearty vote of thanks to you for saving our lives. You're a true warrior. Luke held up his paws to silence the cheers. Aye. I saved you because I was able to, mate. Pity I wasn't there when the red ship hit the Northland shore. Every night and day I think of my son Martin back there growing up without a mother to care for him. Nor a father with me out here chasing the red ship. But we'll catch her. I swear we will. And I'll make the name Viludaska just a dirty memory in the minds of honest beasts. The crew went off to their sleeping places as the ship sailed south in the soft warm night each with their own memories of family lost or left behind. Luke stood in the prow, keeping watch, lost of thoughts of Martin's small figure on the strand, waving his father's old battle sword. He stared forlornly at the gentle bow wave dispersing into the calm, dark sea. Someday, I'll come back and find you waiting for me, son. And that's where we're going to end tonight's reading. Just a quick one for tonight. But thank you so much for joining me. If you're enjoying the readings, please like, share, subscribe, the whole thing. Uh, I'm so glad you guys are listening, have been sticking out through the books this long. We are, uh, we're well over halfway through this. So I don't know how many more episodes there are. I would say maybe a dozen or so, maybe. But thank you guys, and special thank you to my patrons. You guys are spectacular. Thank you so much. And with that, I think I will see you guys next week. Stay safe. Have a good week. Wash your hands.